I give you Colin Steamers. I think it's really important for us to be connected to the external conditions, whether that's through connections with natural light or through um, views of nature. They both combine to reinforce each other. So natural light on its own isn't as strong, it doesn't have a stronger effect on us. And just views of nature without light is also not as strong. But when you combine uh, light, daylight, with uh, a view of nature, a view of green space, they reinforce each other. The effect is stronger. And I think that's partly because essentially we are um, genetically pre-programmed to live outdoors, to, to enjoy and benefit from the outdoor conditions and to respond to the outdoor conditions. And both light and nature um, give us that connection. And so the two combined are, are particularly effective. If we talk about physical health, then things like being fit, being active is important. But if we talk about well-being, which includes perhaps also aspects of mental well-being and social well-being, we need to be connected to each other, connected to the community and connected to the world around us. Um, and those connections can, can be created through architecture. So you can imagine creating a moment in space where people can meet informally or formally that has a view, a connection with outside, or it has a view and connection to the community. You can create another moment where it may be peaceful and quiet and um, where it's um, a good environment to uh, think and read, for example. And it seems to me that, particularly in housing, a building that offers different opportunities, multiple opportunities for different ways of relating to each other, but also withdrawing from light or uh, enjoying con increased contact with nature. Uh, these moments of enjoyment are really important and most of our housing doesn't have many of these moments. I think the key message for me would be diversity and adaptability. So have a, offer a diverse set of conditions, make them user adaptable so the user can decide what's relevant for them at which time of day. So that, for example, if morning light is important to wake up and to be alert and, and to stimulate the circadian rhythm, then having access to morning light in the kitchen or the breakfast room is really important. Uh, but equally at night time when you need to have subdued light levels to get ready for bed, to get ready to sleep, you don't want to be stimulated by too much light and so there needs to be a way of dimming down uh, the lighting conditions to, um, again, to pursue, to follow the, the natural rhythms of your, your body. So I think diversity and adaptability. We can't design the perfect house for everyone. Therefore, we need to design a range of conditions and a range of ways of intervening in, in, um, in the architecture.